can they hear me? Can you guys see me? Can you hear me? It's going to go right to Sherpa's camera. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. Now we're live. Well, now we're live. Nobody saw any of Nobody that. Nobody saw right, any perfectly. of that, Jody. So get on out of there, Sherpa. Zoom on out. Hey, guys. <sighs> welcome to Rec Tech. Thank you so much for hanging out with us this beautiful Thursday. This is lunch break. We do this every Thursday right here on YouTube. Uh, we also do a Tuesday lunch break at 12 noon Eastern Standard on Facebook. So make sure you follow us on all social media. If you have any questions, please put them in the live comment section right there or down below in the comment section. But it's barbecue beef week. They didn't even see your intro, Jody. They didn't even see the intro, Jody. Wow, I don't know what you happened. Did, YouTube did had a glitch. A, uh, media Joker job at the intro. I'm kind of glad they didn't see it. But, um, uh, sorry, we had a little bit of technical difficulties, but we are live right now from the Rec Tech deck, ladies and gentlemen. And it is barbecue beef, beef barbecue week, barbecue beef week. I'm um, here at Rec Tech. We've That's been right. doing a lot of amazing mm -hmm. beef barbecue recipes uh, all week. And then today we're going to be explaining sure. the beef tenderloin. We're going low and slow today. Yeah. But we're going to talk a, a couple of different ways how to cook it. But get on in here, Sherpa. I want, you, I want to check the internal temperature of this bad boy and I also want to show you guys how I set up uh, for uh, more indirect cooking. Oh, I got to turn that bad boy on. Um, how I set up the RTB380 for more of that indirect cooking. So we've got our uh, temp probe here, our instant read thermometer available at rectech.com. It's also a pocket knife. It's also a wine opener. It's also a screwdriver. Uh, so a lot of features, you know, uh, to that, that thermometer as well. But it's also very, very accurate, uh, available at rectech.com. I love this thing. It fits right in my little pouch. So guys, make sure you go and check that out. A lot of new stuff yeah. available at rectech.com. But I'm shooting for an internal temperature of about 140 degrees on this bad boy. But it is set up for more indirect cooking, okay? So anytime I'm doing pork butts, briskets, ribs, anything low and slow, okay? Um, I'm gonna set it up just like this with a pan. I'm gonna put the pan all the way on the right hand side. Now the pan is only doing two things for us. Um, it is uh, creating a buffer between the heat and the meat, so we're set up for a more indirect cooking environment. It's also catching uh, any of those drippings. So I like liquid to be in that pan, not because um, it's gonna help add moisture to the cooking environment, but when you drip, when the grease does drip down, it's not gonna burn and uh, make your food taste bad. Okay? Nice, nice. Um, so again, we're shooting for an internal temperature of about 140 degrees. We're almost right there. Now, I've got another bullseye set up over here um, with a sear kit as well. And uh, we're sitting at about 450 degrees. So there's a couple of different ways um, that you can actually set uh, this cook up. You, you know, you can go low and slow, you can go hot and fast, or you can go reverse sear or traditional sear. Okay, reverse sear, you slow smoke it uh, until it reaches an internal temperature of about 110 degrees. Okay, and then you sear it off and get to that internal temperature of about 140 degrees. Okay, now when you sear it off, you're going to want to do all the edges. It is a round piece of meat, but you want to get all of the edges um, because, again, the purpose of searing it is to finish it off. Whoop, whoop, as well as gives a nice delicious crust on the outside. But you got a good question already, John. I got two of them. The first one's coming at you. They want to know what pellets we're burning today. Okay. And the second one is, this one comes from Trey Owings. He says uh, about the water pan, he said he usually does that, but he says the pan usually runs out of water before he's done. Is that, a, is that a problem? Well, he's, uh, it's not a problem, but, uh, you know, just add more water. Easy peasy. Okay. You know, it's not there to, to add uh, moisture to the cooking environment because the pellets do that actually naturally. Um, but we're going to be using the Kingsford Cherry Wood today, Chef John. Awesome. Um, add a little bit of sweetness yes, sir. to this beef. Yes, sir. Um, and we're going to add a little bit of barbecue sauce to it as well. Shout out to our, our friends at uh, Bomb Barbecue Sauce. Uh, they uh, brought us this. They handed us this. Yeah. At Rec Tech Fest. Sure enough. Uh, on Saturday, so. But this is how our whole beef tenderloin is going to look when you get it. They are very expensive uh, right now, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, you know, just, just make sure that uh, you don't, don't prepare for it because you, you don't want sticker shock when you get to uh, the butcher or the grocery store. Okay. Now, Jenny, why are they so expensive? Uh, because this is the most tender part of the cow, Chef John. This is the most delicious piece. This is where those filet mignon okay. come from. Okay. okay? Um, uh, but uh, it's uh, there's only two of these per cow. That's that's <laughs> it. That's it. Um, so, uh, but very good question. Very good question. Now, uh, when I get these, the first thing I like to do is I like to actually put my knife down, okay, and actually separate as much as I can with my hands. What? Okay? So we're gonna go in here. Now you guys can see there's going to be this this part that is going to come away 
and you need to trim off. Now, we're gonna save this and cook it. We're gonna slow cook it as well, uh, but we're not gonna cook it attached to uh, our tenderloin. Okay? Don't they call that the tail, Jody? Absolutely, yes sir, Chef John. Now, I thought they actually called this the tail because it was at the, the end, but I was wrong. Uh, they actually called this part the tail of the tenderloin. So you guys can see how I got my hands in there. And easy peasy, lemon squeezy, it, it comes right off. You, you really and truly do not need um, uh, any, any knife just yet, okay? Now, you're sometimes and most of the time gonna be left um, with this part right here, so I like to just leave it on there until we're done trimming. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to address the silver skin. Okay. okay. Um, the silver skin, it, you know, you can cook this thing with it on there, uh, and it'll be fine. But you're just not going to get uh, that creamy, uh, beautiful texture mm -hmm. that you're going to want uh, with this piece of meat. Now, this can be easily taken off. Don't overthink it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, do not overthink it. What we're going to do is, is I like to start halfway. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run my knife. Okay. My very sharp Victory Knox knife. Shout, Shout out, out to Victory to Knox for hooking yeah. us up in Memphis and May, giving us a few knives and uh, taking care of us. What I'm going to do is, is I've just essentially slid up underneath that, and I'm going to point my blade a little high, a little uh, away from the meat, okay, towards the silver skin. And what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to kind of skin it, kind of like a, uh, a piece of salmon, Chef John. That's okay? right. So. Uh, we'll get back up underneath of there where we were at. I'll point up to the sky a little bit. And essentially, we can take a lot of that in one stroke, okay? Now, same thing with this. If you've got to run your knife a little bit, that's fine. But this is going to be some soft stuff. Yeah. Okay, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That silver skin is now gone and we got a beautiful piece of meat. That's right. Now, We'll go in here and grab, uh, grab some of these pieces as well and just trim them off. Easy peasy. Again, don't overthink it. If you don't want to do it, you ain't got to do it. You can remove it later. Yeah. Okay. Any other good questions out there, Chef John? Again, well, this is a beef tenderloin. Well, I just wanted to tell them too, while you're talking about that silver skin, the reason why you want to angle your knife up is because that silver skin is going to be a lot tougher Correct. than the actual muscle of the meat. So you're going to slice through the right meat off. without cutting through the silver skin. Yes, That's sir. a great tip, Jody. Okay, and then a lot of this stuff can just be taken off with your hands, okay? You really don't have to go in there and kind of hack this bad boy up, okay? Now for me, I, I like to leave a lot of this fat on there uh, because again, that's gonna give me some great lubrication when we go uh, to actually uh, sear this thing off um, if that's what we're, you know, if that's how we're gonna cook it today, okay? Now, a lot of people will go in here and actually separate. Um, John, do you know what this part is called? Uh, that that is the uh, top of the chain. Okay, the top of the or, chain. Very or the cool. tail, the top of the tail or top of the chain, depending on where you're at in your part of the world. So we're just cleaning this up. We're taking off some of that hard fat, taking off that silver skin. So a lot of folks will go in here and actually separate this and clean it up. But I'm not going to do that because I don't want to tie this today. Okay? I now, like it. Uh, this looks really good. Again, we come in here and just kind of clean up this little end piece. Again, I'm not having to cut it too hard with a knife. Okay, and you can see some more of that silver skin just exposed itself. So we're gonna go in and just completely remove that. I like it. Because it'll be chewy, that's, that's why. Right. Okay? That's right. Now, um, uh, great uh, butchers and meat cutters will now take this and actually tuck it right here. And then we, will th we can actually then tie it. Okay, Ooh. and that just creates a, a more consistent piece of meat. That's right. Um, and this is less likely to dry out when you actually have it tucked and tied and nice and tight. Okay. We're not going to do that today. Okay. Um, we're just trying to make it easy peasy for you guys out there at the house. Um, when you got friends and relatives over, you know, if you've never tried this before, I encourage you to go out there and pick up a delicious beef tenderloin. Mm -hmm. If you know any farmers or anybody, um, you know, this is, you know, part of the whole cow that you can purchase. Um, and again, like we were saying, the filet mignon is cut from this, one of the most popular steaks in the world. Yep. And, um, you know, again, it's the most tender part of the cow. 
Um, I'm a huge fan of the brisket, uh, but the tenderloin uh, is a is a close second. Yeah, and it's going to be one of your okay. most expensive steaks too. Absolutely, absolutely. But again, I like to leave all that fat on there. We're looking really, really good. Now, um, you can hit this with a binder if you'd like. Uh, you know, mustard, molasses. I don't really like molasses uh, with the the beef, um, but mustard. You know, olive oil, uh, anything. You can hit it with a binder. This is still kind of tacky, so we're, we're going to be fine. I'm going to season it up. No. You can make your own rub if you'd like. Shout out to Boar's Line Out for hooking us up with some of your secret Ooh. rub that you guys haven't released on the market yet. Secret, secret. Uh, this moho beef from mm -hmm. our friends. That stuff's delicious. Um, out in Tennessee. This stuff works great as well. Yeah. Again, the white lightning, can't go wrong with it either. Ben's Heifer Dust, available at rectech.com. Mm -hmm. Salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder, paprika, uh, parsley in here as well. This is one of my go-tos for beef. But we're going to use our buddy Dave Williamson seasoning today. We picked this up in Memphis in May. Um, this has got a lot of coarse salt, a lot of coarse pepper, cayenne, red pepper flakes. So it's going to give us those savory notes as well as some heat. John, you got a good question? Yeah, well, we got a couple good questions. They're all starting to come in now. Um, Bill Groves asked though, could you use the trimmings for stock? No, absolutely, for sure, yes sir, without a doubt. You can most definitely use any kind of trimmings uh, or any of that. You could actually, sorry, let me let that truck pass by. Shout out to uh, Estes for delivering uh, grills all over this, this fine nation. And shout out to who's ever calling me uh, in my back pocket. You're probably not a family member. <laughs> Now, Jody, we have some people in the comment section that said they are so excited to be coming back to Academy 2022. <laughs> yeah, I really didn't want to mention it, John, because uh, we released the 2022 dates uh, yesterday and we're already sold out. So I didn't want to like make anybody mad, but yeah, not, we're excited. We're try, yeah, we're not trying to make <laughs> anybody mad, but you know, they're all, I mean, we, what we can, can we only, do, Jody? Yeah. What, what can, can we, we do? do? What can we do? It's a super popular class. A lot of people appreciate and love coming. Um, you learn how to live the rec tech lifestyle, but most importantly, you know, you get to, to meet and uh, have fellowship with all of us. You yes. know what I'm saying? So yes. that's what it's all about. Uh, but yeah, we sold out of the 2022 rec tech Academy dates. We're super, super excited and we're thankful to all of those folks. Because again, a lot of folks coming back, a lot of returners, a lot yeah. of folks that have already taken the class and they want to take it again because they had such a good time and they learned so much. Okay, get on in there, TaylorMade. This is a beautiful shot with all of this texture. You guys can see, get on in here, Sherpa too. You guys can see this coarse. Looking it's actually great. got some of that pretzel salt, just like we have in that Ben's heifer dust. Uh, uh, it's got those uh, red pepper flakes. You see mm. a bunch of cayenne in here. Uh, what else is in this stuff? Um, granulated onion, granulated garlic, you know, pretty much everything that you want to flavor your beef. But look at the texture. Now we're just gonna let that beef sweat just a little bit, okay? and um, we're gonna put it on the grill. Now, uh, this one, we're gonna uh, go low and slow as well. Um, uh, we're just gonna put it on there. I'm gonna take our finished product off because it's at about 140 degrees right now, internal temperature. Guys, I'm gonna need you to smash that share button. However you do it on uh, YouTube. That red uh, rectangle. Yeah, make, make sure you smash that little red rectangle and subscribe to our channel. We'll give you three seconds to do it, three, two, one, smash it. Share this all over the internet, please, ladies and gentlemen. Hit that share button um, to share it all over Facebook. James Lombardo has been trying to blow me up. James, I got a show <laughs> right now, James. Um, but, oh, we got some folks coming in. All right, so we're gonna get this on. Let's first get our tenderloin off. Look how Ooh, good that bad boy looks. Way that looks and again, good. I just trimmed that end right there. Mm. Jared, it smells absolutely, absolutely delicious. Look at that thing right there. Look at the, the beautiful texture it's got. Mm. Um, it's got a great smell to it. Very, very beefy. Yes. But you smells guys can see absolutely I tucked, delicious. I'm tucking that end down here because again, it's smaller and it's more likely to dry out, okay? Now, we could use um, the probe that comes standard with the That's RTB right. 380 if we'd like, but I've got my instant read thermometer right here handy available from rectech.com so that's what we're going to use to monitor the internal temperature of that bad boy now the one thing that you need to make sure of is that you do not dry this out 
or overcook it. That is the, the last thing that you want to do. So it's very, very important to get yourself a thermometer uh, that you trust like the one attached to that PID controller uh, or like the handheld one that we have at Rectech.com. John, you got some more good questions? Yes, this one's coming from Raining Tacos. And it's a hey, pretty, what's up, Taco? It's a pretty good question. Okay. So he says, uh, I'm really wanting the RT700, but I keep seeing talk that it's hard to get much smoke flavor compared to gravity fed or offsets. Is that just the internet hate or is there something to that barbecue no, that's, dad? That, of course, that's just the internet hate. I think, I believe pellet grills produce an amazing amount of smoke. I'm not a huge fan of the overwhelming amount of smoke that I get from like a side burner or a stick burner. I don't like to bite into an ashtray. Okay, I want that wood and uh, smoke to flavor my food and not overpower it. So I think the pellet grills, Rectech uh, specifically does an amazing job, especially partnered with those Kingsford pellets. Um, it's very, very important to use 100% hardwood. Uh, and um, that's really, really important. Why? Because you don't want any fillers. You don't want any binders. You don't want any flavoring oils that the competition uses. Okay, you want 100% hardwood um, for 100% hardwood flavor, okay? So that's why we partnered up with Kingsford because again, it's 100% the wood that is uh, printed on the outside. That's 100% cherry wood. That's 100% classic, which is hickory, cherry, and oak. Correct. Um, but again, it's 100% yeah. the wood that it says it on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's just wood and water. That's There's it. no additives, no preservatives, none no of that binders, stuff. No binders, fillers. So you're fillers. getting 100% um, of that smoke. Um, but again, with Rectech, it's, there's no heating element. Nope. You know, you're using the wood mm -hmm. and the flame mm -hmm. as the fire and heat source 100% of the time. So it's producing smoke 100% of the time. Now yeah. you're going to see that clear and light blue smoke because it's, it's going to burn. You know, Which is the smoke pure. you want. You absolutely, want that blue absolutely. smoke. Absolutely. You want, you want it to be almost clear because again, you want it to flavor and not overpower uh, your food. Now. Let's look at this bad boy. I mean, it's got a great crust on it. Again, we could have taken this off at 110 uh, internal degrees uh, and then uh, turned the grill up and seared it off or transferred it over to our other bullseye here. Um, but we decided to just smoke it low and slow 100% of the time. What we'll do is, is we're just gonna cut um, and uh, these are gonna be great uh, for sliders. Uh, for little sandwiches. Um, I'm actually really, really excited about this because I'm gonna save some uh, slices for breakfast in the morning and I'm gonna eat some of this beef with my eggs. John, you got a good question? Yeah, this one is coming from Glock Dover. And Glock. He, wants, he wants to know, uh, can any, pellet, any brand of pellets be used in the Rectech? Hey, great question. And the answer is absolutely. Any brand, the Rectech is strong enough, sturdy enough, and uh, built well enough that you can actually use any brand of pellets. You know, we're not going to void your warranty for using the competition brand of pellets. Um, that's what all that's what all the other competitors do. We're not going to do that. Uh, you can use any brand of pellet in the Rectech. Of course, we, we recommend 100% hardwood and we recommend Kingsford. But uh, if those if those aren't the pellets that you can get, hey, um, you know, get whatever pellets that you can find locally, okay? Easy peasy lemon squeeze. Just make sure they're cooking pellets. There's also heating pellets out there. Heating pellets are not uh, filtered uh, as much as uh, cooking pellets. So just make sure that you do your due diligence, do a little bit of research, and just make sure that you know you're getting a good product. Um, but uh, very good questions today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. Again, this is Lunch Break. We do this every Thursday live right here on YouTube. Put your live comments right here. Uh, put your comments after the video posts down there at the bottom. We'd love uh, help figuring out what you wanna, want what you want to see us cook. That's right. So please give us some suggestions down below. We, we would love uh, to take some of your suggestions and run with them. John, you got a good question. All right, so there's two. First, right, Eddie guys. E wants get to know, are here. we going to get a Shinerbach dad joke of the day? Oh, we will. We will. Just uh, just wait for it, Eddie. Wait for it. <laughs> and the, uh, the second one uh, wow. comes from Bill Groves. Bill asks, would there be any reason to base the loin when you're cooking it? Yeah, you can if you want to. But for me, what I like is that crispy, crunchity outside. But look at this. This thing is cooked to absolute perfection. Thanks to the Rectech pellet grill and Kingsford pellets. I mean, this mm. thing just is, mm. I mean, I'm barely pulling it. I that looks so John. good. It looks so good. Oh my gosh. So this good, is going to be my piece to eat. Get on over here and try some of this, Chef John. Okay. Come. Mm. Now our good buddy, Dave Williamson was actually traveling the country, uh, performing comedy shows. Yeah. 
He actually opens up for Burt Kreischer. You guys yeah. know he's one of the biggest comedians yeah. in the world right now. Uh, but uh, mm. this is an amazing rub. Oh my gosh. Uh, make sure you follow Dave on all social media at Dave W Comedy. But this is an amazing rub. You can check that out and pick it up on his website. Jody, you can taste the cherry. No wood doubt. In there. It's no so doubt. good. That sweetness from the Kingsford cherry did an absolute amazing job. And then it's not too spicy. No. It's like perfectly seasoned. Right. I mean, perfect. But not again, overly salty. But we seasoned the outside of, of the meat, ladies and gentlemen. We didn't season the inside. So you're getting all that beef flavor. Right. Plus all the seasoning, a little bit of spice from the crushed red pepper. That cherry Perfect wood amount smoke. of salt. So good. Mm, mm -hmm. mm -mm. But yeah, if you want to, I'm not a huge fan of it, but you can also just hit it with a little bit of barbecue sauce. Mm. There we go. Let that barbecue sauce set. I would use a, I'm talking about. a little bit thicker of a sauce, um, but this is going to be absolutely amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there yeah. we go. That ties everything together, Chef John. Wow, it really does, Jay. Mmm. Man. I mean, there's a little bit of there's a sweetness in here that's just tying everything together. A little bit of acid in there tying everything acid, together. Acid, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Really good. You nailed it, my friend. Man, this is a great, this is a great recipe. And it's easy, too. Where do they find it, Jody? Guys, you can sign up to get this recipe, recipe, <laughs> this recipe aggressively shoved into your email inbox. Just go to rectech.com forward slash lunch break. Fill out all the information, check all the boxes. Um, that way we can send you, we can legally send you these e emails and uh, fill up your inbox with some delicious recipes. Again, sign up for the newsletter at rectech.com. Um, that's how you'll know about Academy release dates that are sold out for 2021 and 2022. That's right. Uh, that's how you'll know if we're going places, if we're doing things, when's the next Rec Tech Fest? Everybody's asking. So make sure you sign up for the newsletter too. John, you got a great question out uh, there? I got a couple more for you. Uh, the first one's coming from Shane Andrews. Uh, Shane says, I see a lot of folks out there recommending lining the drip pan with foil. Yeah. What do y'all say about that? Yeah, so I'm a huge uh, fan of lining the drip tray with foil personally at my house. I don't, I'm a scraper. Um, but no, if you line the drip tray uh, with foil um, on the 340, 590, 700, 2500, on any of those lifestyle grills, um, I would just change it about every two cooks, okay? Um, and then make sure it's really, really smooth. And make sure you don't go over the edges, okay? When you go over the edges, uh, near the air gaps, the air can actually push that folded piece up and actually restrict airflow. So just make sure you keep it in the valley um, and don't use too much um, and don't have a bunch of uh, crinkly lines in it because those nice. create little pools That's good. for that grease to kind of sit in and start to burn. That's a really um, good tip. But yeah, no, uh, foil your drip tray. That way it's just a little bit easier to clean up. Another great tip is save your uh, jam jars, your salsa jars, um, all of those glass jars that you have in your refrigerator. The pickle jars work perfect. Uh, save those with the lid. Put those in your drip, tr uh, your, your drip bucket, okay? The grease will actually drip in that jar. You've got a lid for it. You could put the lid on the jar and just throw that whole thing away. You don't have to pour out the nasty grease, get your hand in there with a towel and clean out the bucket. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, okay? Um, but very good questions. Again, uh, shout out to all the new Rec Tech owners out there. Just to give you guys a heads up, the only maintenance that you have to do on these bad boys is clean the fire pot about every four to five cooks. Let your grill run itself empty about every 200 pellets, um, and then clean it out about once a year. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, don't ever think it. Um, but John, you got another great question. Yeah, uh, this was coming from Michael Sitt. Michael says, hey, uh, Michael. would you be using a water pan if this was done on the 590 or 700? No, sir, again, come on over here, Sherpa. This is not, This, I guess you could, everybody's calling it a water pan, but that is not the purpose of this pan. The reason why I have this pan is in here is to set this cook up for more indirect cooking environment because we have the perforated um, deflector shield that allows more direct heat. Well, I want to cook this low and slow and I want it to cook it very evenly. So we put the pan in there. So all of the heat is coming up from this area and rolling over this pig piece of meat. Uh, we have liquid in there because when grease drips down, I don't want that grease to, to immediately burn. Okay, if it, that grease immediately burns, it's going to make this meat taste like crap. Yeah, that sounds for great. For lack of better yeah. work. 
Um, it's not going to make the meat taste good. So the reason why we have the liquid in there is to make sure that grease um, doesn't burn if there is any grease dripping down. But again, the it. reason for the pan and the bullseye is to set it up for more indirect cooking because there's only one piece of metal between the meat and the heat source on that grill. It's unlike any other pellet grill out there, ladies and gentlemen. So um, for anyth anything for like Boston butts, briskets, ribs, that's how I like to set it up um, for more indirect cooking environment. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, I do my four, uh, one hour ribs on there yep. with no pan. Mm -hmm. um, we do not use pans in the 340, 590, 700, 2500, uh, because there's two pieces of metal between the meat and the heat. You've got a deflector shield and you've got a drip pan. Um, so there's two pieces of metal between the meat and the heat source, so the, the meat and food is protected. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not getting all that direct heat like you would with the RTB 380 bullseye. Very good questions out there today. You guys are you guys are really trying to uh, understand how these grills work. That's right. And that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. You know, understand um, how to use this tool because that's exactly what it is, Chef that's John. It. That's it. It's a tool. Yes, sir. Uh, to uh, help you with your culinary. Um, adventures. Yeah. Time and temp one more time on okay. that beef tenderloin. So we put this bad boy on what did we, what was it was about 930. Yes sir. Uh, at uh, 225 degrees. We started at 12 and it was done. So that that's what a two and a half hours. Yeah. Uh, so it took it about two and a half hours at 225 to get to an internal temperature of 140 degrees. That's what we shot for it. Again it's perfectly cooked to perfection. It's got a, a beautiful little smoke ring on it. Uh, it's also got a great crust, which I'm very excited about. And today uh, we use the Meat Dave Rub. It's an all-purpose rub for my buddy Dave Williamson. You guys go and follow him on all social media, at Dave W. Comedy. Um, but this is a great rub. Um, but any of the rubs available at Rectech.com or the rubs that are part of that rub and sauce bundle mm -hmm. will work and uh, uh, flavor your meat absolutely for deliciously, sure. ladies and gentlemen. But um, John, any other good questions? We I, use the cherry wood from Kingsford. Uh, that delicious cherry wood is available at rectech.com or your local grocery store. Uh, so make sure you go pick yourself up a, a bag of Kingsford pellets because again, it's 100% the wood, the wood that is printed on the outside of the bag. 100% cherry wood was used today to give our, our uh, food a delicious color as yes, well sir. as a nice sweetness. Mm -hmm. But any other good questions, Chef? Yeah, Tom? this one's coming from Dean Anderson. Dean hey, says, Dean. Uh, could I put some pellets or a piece of hickory on top of my deflector Absolutely. if I wanted to get more smoke flavor at high temps? Yes, sir, you can, for sure. Uh, some folks will even put uh, charcoal briquettes, you know, because they love that uh, charcoal flavor. But very good question, very good question. Way to bring that up, because that's probably going to help somebody. Jody, yeah. what's the best cook for a new Rectech user? Oh, uh, best cook for a new Rectech is going to be chicken thighs. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, you can't mess it up. Right when you get done with that 400 degree um, initial burn in of the grill, um, you throw those chickens, throw some ch seasoned chicken thighs on there. Uh, they take about 45 minutes to cook at 400. Mm -hmm. You are going to be absolutely blown away yeah, at are. how delicious and easy they are. But uh, we want you to knock that first cook out of the park. So make sure you give us a call if you have any questions or anything like that. We are here to help. Uh, Chef John is at Chef John Pinnell on all social media or Chef John at rectech.com for social, I mean, excuse me, for his email. Greg is at Chef Greg Muller mm -hmm. on all social media. That's right. Uh, Chef Greg at rectech.com is his email. Mine's Jody at rectech.com. That's right. You can find me on social media at BBQ Dad Jody, spelled BBQ D A D J O D Y. Please go out there and follow me. Um, got a lot of adventures coming up. Yeah, you got do. A lot of great content coming up. Yes, sir. But easy peasy lemon squeezy tenderloin. Ladies and gentlemen, go pick yourself up some beef this weekend That's right. or tomorrow because we got Memorial Day Memorial up. Day, baby. What are you going to do for Memorial Day, John? You know, I'm going to be we, ripping just, lips just, on the I lake, my I friend. I heard that we were off. Yeah. So my beautiful wife is going to be out of town, so I'm going to have the boys all week. Bring them on the boat with me. Let's go rip some lips. Let's do it, baby boy. Okay, you I bring love the, it. You bring the uh, food, I'll bring all the, the fish and supplies. And the life vest for the little ones because I ain't got no baby life vest on the boat. <laughs> Hey, so Jody, yeah. uh, this question you get all the time. Wow. I know you love answering. This one's coming from Ken Lawson. He says, how often uh, should you vacuum out the ash at the bottom of your grill and at the same Great time question, empty buddy. the fire pot? All right, so the fire pot, what I like to do is uh, clean it out about every four to five cooks. And all I do is I take my gloved hand. When the grill's cool, I stick my hand in there and I scoop out whatever little ash and pellets are in there and I throw it down at the bottom of the grill, the bottom barrel. I only clean out the bottom barrel um, about once a year. 
and that's March 20th, the first day of spring. Shit. The reason why I clean it out on March 20th is because I, I like to allow that ash to build up for the winter months. So if you leave the ash at the bottom of the barrel, it's gonna do four beneficial things for you. Yes, it's gonna do four beneficial things for you. The first thing is it's gonna catch any fly ash that may uh, be flying up. Having ash down at the barrel mm -hmm. helps catch all of that stuff. So it doesn't run against stainless steel and run right up into your cooking chamber, okay? So the first thing it does, it helps catch ash that's flying around in your chamber. The second thing it does, okay, it creates a layer of insulation. That's right, that ash creates a layer of insulation so your grill loses heat uh, less quick. Right, John? Less That's quick. right. Slower. Slo yeah. Loses heat slower. That's right. <laughs> um, the third thing it does, it reduces the surface area that the grill physically has to heat up. Right. Think about that. If you allow that ash to build up, it reduces the surface area that the grill physically has to heat up. Your grill will heat up in temperature quicker. Yep. It'll also recover in temperature quicker. quicker. Yes. The fourth beneficial thing it does, I'm a messy cook, ladies and gentlemen. When grease drips down to the bottom of that barrel and I got ash down there, it helps clean that grease up much, much easier, okay? It actually absorbs into that ash. And um, again, all I have to do is clean it out about once a year. So there's four beneficial things to allowing the ash to build up at the bottom of your barrel. Now, if, you're, if, you're, if you cook a lot, when that stuff starts to pile up, uh, go, yes, you know, I encourage you to clean it. Um, but don't get in there and vacuum it out every time. You know, allow some seasoning to build up. You know, Cook 20 is gonna taste 20 times better, why? Because you've developed seasoning on the inside of that grill. You've got some grease, you've got mm -hmm. some food particles all That's in right. there, uh, help flavoring that food. Okay, um, but uh, again, I, I leave you with this for the weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, don't overthink it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Say that in your head when you're cooking, and I promise you, cooking is going to be much a much more funner activity um, than it has ever been before. Okay, just don't overthink it, guys. Amen. Amen. John, you got any good questions before we Ma dip on out of here? They are absolutely. Again, look at this beautiful tenderloin. Um, a, a time and temp, it took it about two and a half hours at 225 degrees to reach an internal temperature of 140. We used Kings for cherry wood on the RTB380. We set it up for a more indirect cooking environment. Um, so you guys try that at home and let us know how it worked for you. Um, we use the Kings for cherry wood. I said that yeah. already. Yeah. When about what about those new pellets from Kingsford? When are those available? They want yeah, to know. Yeah, that's right. Here. You guys, if you guys didn't know, Kingsford unveiled three brand new flavors of pellets this weekend at RecTech Fest 2021. Those will be available soon only from RecTech.com for one okay. year, John. Okay. So we are the only supplier of those pellets for an entire I year. I love it. So make sure you guys check out RecTech.com for all the specials and new stuff coming. Sign up for the newsletter because you are going to find out uh, what those flavors are. Mm -hmm. um, and make sure you sign up for this recipe, RecTech.com forward slash lunch break. But um, I do got a dad joke of the day. It's going to be a classic one. I set it out there at RecTech Fest. Yeah. Um, what, uh, what do you see? when a duck bends over. What do you see when a duck bends over, Jody? His butt quack. Hey! hey! Classic dad joke brought to you by Shiner Bach Beer. There's nothing finer than a Shiner, ladies and gentlemen. Go out there to your local retailer and pick up a six-pack delicious Shiner Bach Beer. I will. Mm -hmm. Right when I leave work today. Sure enough, be drinking it for Memorial Day. Spill it. I have a hole in my lip. <laughs> um, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section down below. Remember, we uh, need your help uh, to know what you want to see us cook. So please leave that in the comment section. Don't forget, Fun Day Friday is going to be a great one tomorrow. We're going to yes, be cooking sir. beef brisket, the culmination of barbecue month. Climaxing. Climaxing. We're, we're climaxing on beef brisket. I'm telling tomorrow. you, I cannot wait, Jody. I'm fired up about it. So make sure you yeah. smash that share button, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, from everybody here at the RecTech Worldwide Headquarters in beautiful Evans, Georgia, God bless you. God bless the United States of America. And where are we going to see him at, John? At the Rec Tech. That's do, right, do, do. Look at that. Do, Look at that do, tenderloin. Do. Man, do, even do, flies want to eat it. Rec Tech yeah. lifestyle. Set it hey, hey. and come get it. Oh, whoa. When the sun starts going down. What time is that? We're out. <laughs>